What's up guys? It's your boy, Fast Lane D. Alright, if you're new to the channel, I have two bikes here. Okay, I have my 2014 Yamaha R1, which I absolutely love, and then I have my 2011 Harley Davidson V Rod Muscle Baby. We'll be talking about the MSF course. Should you take it? Should you not take it? What are my thoughts on it? Did I take it? I would take the R1, but for some reason I lost the mount on my GoPro that tilts the GoPro up a little bit more because of that aggressive seating position on that bike so we're going to take the Harley to go get that mount so that I can do some more videos on the R1 but let's go and hop on and get this video going It feels like summer. Saturday afternoon, perfect day and weather to ride. Lots of bikes out. I want to give y'all some background information here. I'm 26 years old. I've been riding, riding for five years now. Knock on wood, thank the Lord. I've not been in any accidents. I've not laid my bike down. And I always tell people it's not about how many years you've ridden, it's about how many miles you've actually ridden. And I've ridden a lot of miles. Some people have their bikes and they barely ride them. They ride them only on a summer day. It's 80 degrees outside, not a chance of rain, light traffic. Like there's all these ridiculous conditions it has to be in order for them to get their bike out. When I first started riding, my bike was my main form of transportation. So it was raining. I've even ridden in the snow hot, cold, below freezing, didn't matter what it was, I was on the bike, I didn't really have a choice. So I want to preface the video with that. I'm not going to say I'm some expert rider here, um, but I definitely have a, like at least 30,000 miles of riding under my belt, for sure within the five years. So, I have a little bit of experience. Now, I did not take the MSF course, but hear me out, here's why I did not take the MSF course. Prior to getting my motorcycle, I had a 50cc scooter that I had ridden for about maybe eight months. So I tell people that was my kind of version of the 250 before I ended up getting my FRI. So on the scooter, I was able to get familiar with being on two wheels on the road, counter steering, being comfortable around other cars, knowing how to maneuver. I mean, imagine merging onto a 55 mile per hour highway on a scooter that maxes out at about 35, 40 miles an hour. Maybe 50 if I'm going downhill. But you definitely had to have some balls to be on that thing and be comfortable and understand how to operate it on the road. Also prior to riding, the car that I had was a manual transmission. So I had been driving before I got my first motorcycle, a manual transmission vehicle for about six years. <laughs> Just slid the back end out. Oh man, I love sliding the rear on this thing. So I was comfortable with shifting gears. I understand how to shift gears, when to shift gear, what gear to be in on certain roads and all that good stuff. So all that was not new to me. It was just learning how to do it with learning how to brake with my right hand and right foot and then clutch with my left foot and shift with my, excuse me, clutch with my left hand and shift with my left foot. And we finally made it. We finally made it. So we'll turn here. Ooh, that nice spot right up front. Beautiful. To the magnificent, magnificent Best Buy. 
Is it just me? Does anyone else get excited when they go to Best Buy? I'm not a huge tech guy, but there's all sorts of cool toys in here. Let's go in here and check it out. Let's see if we can find a mount. Uh, you cannot tell me that this bike is not beautiful. Oh my god. Damn. Jeez. With a big old juicy booty in the back, boy. What you know about that? Of course, they did not have anything that I needed. Go figure. But back to the topic. Now the question is, should you take the OSF course? And the short answer is hell yes. The bay and the return on your investment in that course is tenfold. They teach you everything if you've never been exposed to a motorcycle about familiarizing yourself with the bike, how to take corners, how to quickly accelerate, how to stop an emergency, and all sorts of stuff. I'll put a list up on the screen. And people say it's expensive. If you look at it, $150 it's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. I mean, that's like buying a helmet for yourself, a second helmet. Slide. <laughs> oh man, this thing's so much fun. If the course is able to save you from getting in an accident, dropping your bike, then that pays for itself tenfold. It's getting in an accident, it's going to skyrocket your insurance, especially if you're new to riding. And it's just not fun. Paying deductibles, paying to get your bike fixed, etc, etc. And if you drop your bike, no one wants to ride a bike around. That's super all scratched up. Obviously, you want to keep it in the condition you got it, or even in better condition than what you found it in. So that course can save you from that, that pays for itself. I've also heard of people saving on their insurance from taking the MSF course. In most states, you're also able to opt out of having to do the actual driving test in order to get your motorcycle endorsement. So if you take that course, at the end of it, all you have to do is go to the DMV with some paperwork saying that you took and passed the course, and you'll get your motorcycle license. Versus how I did it, I had my permit for about I think a month or two before I went and actually took the driving test. Yeah, it wasn't that bad, honestly, to do it, but it makes the process easier. Now the question up for debate is, do I regret not taking the MSF course? Eh, should I have taken it? Hell yes. But I didn't, and I turned out okay. As for any new rider that ever asked me, I'm gonna tell him yes. It can only help you, it will not hurt you. That's all I got for y'all. New riders, take that MSF course. It'll help you out. Fast lane needs checking out, baby. Peace. Woo!